What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Today we're gonna to talk about the Witch Doctor, Starter, Survival Guide for Diablo 3, Patch 265, and Season Suite 17. Now in these videos, we take you from zero to hero and kind of give you recommendations from level one all the way up to end game, what you would be playing or pushing with. These videos are heavily based off of the Challenge Rift bag start. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check the description or look on the channel for the Challenge Rift bag guide because that's going to basically make everything clear for you. It's a 17 minute video so it's hard to shoehorn these into every single starter guide. So definitely check it out so you're not lost. First things first we're going to talk about the 475 blood shards you get in the challenge rift bag and how to spend them. So if you want a guaranteed multiplier you want to make sure that you get your season started out right. I gotta say you gotta go for mojos. There's only one possible mojo for Witch Doctor and that's the Gazing Demise. You get a huge multiplier with it. I was able to do T6 up to level 20 just using this and no gear whatsoever. It's really powerful and super underrated. Witch Doctors have a really good start. Witch Doctors might be the fastest massacre bonus leveling class because Haunt is really powerful at chaining mobs together. And just in general, the pets hit hard. This is a really solid start overall. If that's too boring for you and you want to take some risk this season, wait till level 34 and roll helmets. There's eight possible helmets you can get, but you can get some really cool helmets from it. The Carnival, which has got buffed to 10 fetishes this patch. The Mask of Jerome, which gives your pet damage a 200% bonus. The Quizzicodal, which synergizes with Jade, and you're going to get Jade as a starter. And um, Leoric's Crown, you can put a red gem to get an XP bonus. So there's about four good ones out of the lot. And it's really up to you. You want to be safe? Maybe you roll until you get your mojo. And then you wait till level 34. And then you roll the rest of your blood shards on helmets. That might be the best strategy to get the guaranteed one. And then you spend your extra on something extra. Because of the new challenge rift bag, we're able to take a level 70 item at level 1 if we run and get the cube. And upgrade it and get one free legendary I would for sure go for ceremonial knives. Now there's a lot here, but if you land a dagger of darts, it's so good while leveling. If you land a barber, that's really good, especially it pairs with the offhand we talked about. A sacred harvester is used in almost every witch doctor build. And Montezuma knife you can use for early game farming. There's a lot of goodies here. There's really no other case you can make besides maybe helmets. And you can specifically roll for ceremonial helm. So if you are voodoo masks, sorry. If you do upgrade masks, right, you have a higher probability to get something good with masks. Make sure you make a mask or a dagger. It can be confusing. I'll put a link to the calculator in the description. If I forget, type exclamation mark BS in my stream and it'll pop up like Nightbot will trigger it. But anyway, so if you go to helms. This is not the right helm to make for Witch Doctor. You want to go to a Voodoo Mask. So make sure you're upgrading Voodoo Mask and you have a chance to get some of the helms that we talked about earlier. And if you decide to roll weapons, make sure you roll Ceremonial Knives, not Daggers, right? And that's the same thing with a lot of the class specific items. Like make sure it's a Crusader Shield and not a normal shield because you won't get it. While leveling up, I would focus on things like Haunt. I would use your zombie dogs. I would use the gargantuans with the humongoid rune. It's a really good rune and you get it first. It has a nice 585 damage cleave to the target. Really solid overall. Spirit walk's good for movement and things like that. So basically use your pets to level and focus on haunt if you can. It's really good. If you happen to get a drop when you're leveling, like let's say you get something to build off of, then you want to maybe focus on that. Like if you were to get a carnival, then maybe focus on your fetishes or if you get a fire bat staff, then use fire bat. Just focus on whatever drops you get. If you get no drops, then it's just pets and haunt was really good. On your way up to 70 at around level 61 or so, you wanna start looking for double crit yellow items like rings and amulets. These things are incredibly powerful. And a lot of times they're better than the level 70 items you get. Like just don't wear a legendary because it's legendary. Make sure you look for these strong items here. Once you hit 70 and start killing some stuff, you're gonna get your two and four piece sets before your GR20 clear. Uh, the Jade set is super duper strong. The two piece, when Haunt lands on a target already affected, affected by Haunt, it does 3,500 seconds worth of Haunt damage. That's a crazy amount of damage. You'll be like two, three shotting elites. It has really good single target for elites. It doesn't have the best wave clear, but it's really powerful and one of the best starts this season. The four piece, 
Soul Harvest gains the effect of every rune and has its cooldown reduced by one second every time you cast Haunt or Locust Swarm. So you spam Haunt and then you pop Soul Harvest on the target and it's gonna do damage. I would definitely use Creeping Death. That's why I have it in my starter build. It really does amplify the damage. Your Haunt and Locust Swarm last forever. As your group is doing bounties or if you're doing solo bounties, make sure to craft Reaper's Wraps if you can. You don't need them. It's just nice to have more resource always. Also the first GR you do every single season, you do get a Bane of the Powerful, so that's really nice. Let's just jump in here and I'll kind of showcase the power of the build. You really don't need to do anything. This is this uh, Spirit Walk to move around. You want to keep up Soul Harvest and then you just throw out some haunts on the target and you can see boom, yellow dead. My sheet damage is less than 500k. No Paragon, nothing in the queue beneficial, all marquee gems. Really good start. It is kind of weird against um, like trash mobs, I guess. So I would just kind of go from Elite Pack to Elite Pack and light them up. And so you'd, you would understand the Rift Guardian would be an easy kill because our single target is so good. So it's just a matter of getting there. So this is kind of a bad map too. And Impalers are known for having some of the highest most terrible single target damage in the game high physical damage so it looks like i'm about to die but we killed the elite first let's look for another one this looks like a dead end all right all right impalers have your way <laughs> you can kill trash i guess you just have to work them a little bit more uh, prana nato does uh, allow them to take 15 percent it debuffs them right they take 15 percent more damage from all sources so you can always piranha nato them before. No, we're gonna spirit walk to avoid all damage. If you get in trouble, pop spirit walk. You can see the J2 piece, really powerful. I don't put it up there with invoker or impale just because it's kind of like a unique type of effect. Like you have to double, triple dot them to kill them, but it's still a really good build overall. But anyway, you get it. Jade, Jade is the shit, okay? Once you get your six piece bonus, you get a 50% damage reduction, which is super welcomed for intelligence based classes. They take a lot of physical damage. You get killed really easily. So you get 50% DR and you do 10,000 seconds worth of remaining damage on your damage over time abilities. It's a crazy strong build. If you don't know, Jade was the number one witch doctor build in season 16. Carnival might be a little bit stronger than Jade, but Jade's still a powerhouse, maybe the second strongest build for Witch Doctors. And I definitely recommend you main this if you've never played it before. So this is one of the few classes where you get your push set, your, your set you might be maining right from the jump. It's really nice to get right away. I will include a Jade speed build in, des in the description below. Jade has a really easy time for speeds. You basically just sevens around and you use like the wormwood in the cube, it'll auto dot everything. You throw one or two haunts, hit soul harvest, and then you just move on. It's pretty chill speed build. You probably be around four or five minute clears from GR 60 all the way up to GR 100. Go Jade, people love it, it's fun to play, you should main it. If you don't wanna main Jade, and you wanna play something unique or buffed, or you wanna celebrate the lawn season, I definitely would recommend that you play Lawn Carnival. This would be my pick if I was playing Witch Doctor this season, which I might actually do. Lawn Carnival is tanky and mobile, kind of like Jade, Jade's a little tanky. And you do damage with your pets, so you're like a half generator build and a half pet build. It's a really interesting play style and it's one of the stars of the patch, I would say. You can use it for T16 bounties and for greater rifts and for group play. It's kind of all around pretty good. And the same thing for Jade, you can say the same thing about Jade, you can use it in all aspects of the game as well. For speeds, you can play the two builds that we talked about. You can still play Chicken Dock, but it's a little weak. You might have to put some work into it, like augments. Uh, the new Torment 16 wasn't so kind to Chicken Doc. I'd probably just recommend you play Carnival, but if you want to play this Sage set, there's a Zuni Pet Sage build that's pretty damn good. You can play it and you can put some more Paragon into it. You can put some Augments into it and it'll only perform better. It scales really well with the main stat, especially if you use like Gruesome Feast, which Doctors do really well with more and more main. I guess all classes do better with more and more main stat. But yeah, the Zuni Sage pet build is rocking. You can, even if you have to drop it to T15 instead of T16, um, it'll get a lot of DBs per hour. And I would recommend the build, really mobile, 
You can play Spirit Barrage Witch Doctor. It's visually super awesome to look at. It, this used to be one of the best wave clear characters in the game. This used to be part of the meta actually until Wizards came along and ruined everything. But <laughs> you can, all these Phantasm things actually are pets. They get benefit from your Enforcer gem, right? They're like a pet. So they do damage and then they explode and do a nice set of damage. They focus on the Gazing Demise. So this was the level one damage recommendation with Blood Shards we recommended, right? So if you want to get familiar with that and you want to transition into Spirit Barrage, you can. Um, we use the Barber as well. This is super viable and you can run any of these DPS builds up until like 110-ish speeds in your group. So Lawn Carnival, Lawn Spirit Barrage, Jade, all viable for like pugs or like uh, 100 to 110-ish group play without really holding your group back, right? The game changed. Like 110s are the new hundreds and it's totally viable, man. One thing a lot of people ask me, hey Blood, when do I switch over from like a normal build to a lawn build? At what point do you know? And for me, it's the simple answer is whenever it's faster. So like when would you switch to a different race car when your new race car is faster than your old race car, right? So as soon as you get enough items, you can just save the armory. Just go into the armory and save your lawn build and save your jade build. And as soon as Lawn starts outperforming it, then switch over. It really just depends on your multipliers, your class. There's so many variations, it's really hard to give you a blanket answer, but when one is faster, use that one. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be all for me today. Shout out to the patrons making these videos possible, giving me the strength to keep grinding, even though it's been such a hectic week. Season is almost upon us, I can't wait. Make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash bloodshed. I'll probably stream on like 3 p.m. on Friday to 3 to 5 p.m. on Saturday. So that'll be like over a 24 hour stream. I'll get some rest and I'll come back all day Sunday until Game of Thrones. It's gonna be a beautiful weekend with Game of Thrones finale as the crescendo. I can't wait. I hope you guys are excited to join me on the journey. This is the bo 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 bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.